let us we're going to be a little bit classy on this one we're going to try out uh microsoft art gallery the collection of the national gallery in london apparently we're going to get some low res ass pictures here though we probably may have to censor a couple of them going by uh, those thumbnails but uh let's let's jump in let's have a look microsoft art gallery because I've been meaning to do that. Oh, yeah, it's uh, we're already already starting with like two hundred and fifty six colors. So uh, yeah, these these aren't going to be high res, are they? What is what is going on there? She's got an itchy bum. He's he's just got out of the chair, and all he's got to cover himself is just like a bit of satin. Anyway, um, do we get any like audio or anything? The National Gallery was founded in 1824 and is in Trafalgar Square, London. It has the United Kingdom National Collection of Western European Paintings from the 13th century to the early 20th century. Why can I click on the butt, though? Oh, it just brings this up. Okay. So what do we got? Artist Lives, Historical Atlas, Picture Types, General Reference, Guided Tours. Yeah, give me give me a guided tour. Let's, let's have a look at the collection. These guided tours discuss important themes in art. Each tour has com commentary and is illustrated with highlights from the National Gallery collection and this system. At the end of the tour, you'll find an index of the featured paintings. Let's do paintings as objects. In a modern world of mass-produced reproductions, it's easy to forget that a painting is more than the image on its surface. Many of the paintings in the National Gallery are actually pieces of religious furniture. That's a way of presenting it, I guess. Like this were made to open and close, so they could be transported and set up in different places. Try the close button to see how it worked. Oh, okay. Choose next page to find out more about altarpieces. Oh, that's that's actually paintings. quite nice. As objects. Cool. Yeah, you get a little bit of interactivity. That's that's nice. Close and open that. Oh, and you got different scenes isn't it all the different parts of like life of jesus yeah so they mention yeah they got the the nativity some current some coronation and then the crucifixion there we go um and it's by just a the mena boy <laughs> mena boy is that his name okay signed on the reverse justice Inkshit in medieval, dated on the front base, anno, um, whatever that is in Roman numerals. I think that's like 13, yeah, it's got it up here, 1367. Poplar wood, presented by Queen Victoria at the Prince Cons Consort's Wish, 1863. Okay. Altar pieces were placed at the back of an altar to provide the setting for celebration of a Christian mass. Mm -hmm. Here is another example. This time, I, I will point that out. A Christian mass has never been like a celebration. Not the not the ones I go to, anyway. For permanent installation in churches, the most complicated examples had many hinges and could be opened to display different combinations of images. Okay. Oh, okay. So they like kept the painting and like restored the frame or something from the looks of that. Oh yeah, and yeah, you have your whatever setup you want when you're when you're at mass. Yeah, okay. Whether on many panels or <laughs> rack, large altar pieces. I love it, like were commissioned for specific if I, uh, uh, oh, hang on, I'll stop talking for a second. Building. This one comes from a church in Venice. Oh, okay, that was it for the guided tour. But I love that. Like, if I went to the National Gallery in London and went and saw this, I'd be like, holy shit, this is amazing. Because I, I love doing that with art galleries. So I've been to the the end of GV, the National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne a few times. And what I've seen, I've really enjoyed. So I think I've seen Osama Tezuka, who did uh, Astro Boy, all his, like, manga prints and stuff. Um... Did the Salvador Dali exhibition that ever like literally everyone went to that one like everyone they actually opened it twenty four seven because there were that many people going to check out his stuff and that was really good. Um, what else is the other one? Um, the guy who did the Great Wave of Kanagawa, the like the woodblock prints. I forgot his name, and I think that was the most recent one I went to. It has been a while, but yeah, I usually like to... If something good's on, I'll, I'll actually go in the city and go and check it out. But yeah, no, this makes me like... This is... Oh, we can zoom in, though. Slightly. 
no we can't really zoom in at all like that's just a slightly bigger picture okay um but i just yeah this this just made me laugh it's like jesus what's going on with that nipple what's, what's going on there <laughs> all right um can we like oh that just expands it as well okay the painting has been cut to a new shape. Yeah, and the the painting is the called The Incredulity the of St. Thomas. St. Thomas is incredulous about Jesus' face, nipples. They had the altarpiece cut to fit. Yeah, right. The construction shows what it probably looked like before. Okay. Oh, hang on. What's what's going on here? Um, typical Venetian altarpiece of its period. Only one gallery, only one the gallery possesses. We had the one in Venice of 1505 by Giovanni Bellini. Okay, that's the Bellini one. Seema creates an imaginary space to stand the figures in. This space seems like an extra room beyond the church wall where the painting hung. The illusion is increased by making the painting architecture look continuous with the real church. Yeah, may originally have had a square top, which increases the sense of spatial continuity. Oh, okay, and they're like, that's meant to be the altar there, I guess, and it's meant to be like a window or something. Yeah, right, right, right. Uccello's painting of the Battle of San Romano is one in a set of three commissioned by Florence's Medici rulers for a room in their palace. When they reorganised their living arrangements... Probably put a little arch on it. Okay. Um, did I just skip? I, I think I just skipped, like, part of the thing. Okay. Um... Titian's Bacchus and Ariadne was also painted for a specific setting. Oh, that's who it's meant to be Alfonso here? Alfonso d'Este commissioned it as one of a series of works, all based on a theme from classical literature. Yeah, Bacchus was a god and Ariadne the was the chick was that put the, the thread in the maze for Theseus and the Minotaur? Is it, I, I think that's correct. I don't know. Andrian's, I, I'd love to be able to see like the full pictures of these, though. Oh, we can sort of... Yeah, righto, righto. Yeah, we can see a big one of Bacchus and Ariadne. Ariadne's still got a bit of an itchy ass, Just hanging out with some cheaters and shit. Yeah, right, eh? Yeah, another naked fawn. There's just a dog. Yeah. Yeah, because I think... I, I, I kind of want to do that myself. Like, I remember Jabroni Mike and Frederick Nudson... Nudson, sorry. Did, um... Like, they got a super high-quality picture of, um... What was it Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch and like just zoomed in on like all the stupid shit. I kind of wouldn't mind going through that with like Matey or something. That'd be cool. Um, oh, nudie ladies. And yeah, let's have a look at it. What's the animation? Painted for a specific setting. So it's showing Our off the layout of... Commissioned it as one of a series of works. All based on a theme. Oh, it's meant to be like these are all meant to have a theme or something. The okay. shows a reconstruction. Of the complete installation. Yeah, righto, righto. Okay. Um, Rubens painted this view of the country round his manor, Het Stein, for his own collection. Yeah, righto. Like many of his paintings, it grew in size as he worked on it. Oh, and it's the showing you like. Will show you how the work was put together. Oh, it's seventeen different panels. Oh wow! No, that's pretty cool actually. Galleries, the wandering place, landscape painting became an independent art subject for artists in the Netherlands in the 16th century. Pieter Brugel was the main exponent. Rubens collaborated with his son, Jan Brugel. We can also look at the adoration of the king. God, you got a bit of a shit house, eh, king? What's this? Oh, no, I guess this is another religious one. Maybe everyone's come and hang out and look at Jesus. Or... No, there's like a king there. There's some. Um... No, I, I'm guessing that's meant to be baby Jesus and Mary and fucking everyone's just come in for a gander. Yep, doing the old baby shower thing. Oh, and we can just... Oh, we can go through and look at all the stuff like Bruegel or go back and do Whereas the tour. Whereas Rubens' canvas grew as <laughs> this small picture has been assembled from pieces of a large This is, this is not an embrace. On this the next is... page, we will see how. <laughs> this is how you... <laughs> This is part of the uh, sexual harassment training that, uh, you know, mid 15th century artists got. <laughs> is this... It, 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 this guy kind of looks like Terry Jones, actually. <laughs> is it all white if I touch your shoulder? Ah, get away from me! Um, wow, that's... <laughs> that's art, apparently. Okay. 
Um, the subject of this picture is unclear and it may not have had any subject as such. It was a 17th century notice, perhaps, recording in an earlier tradition that the picture contained a court dwarf. The male figure here it is, it seems, of small stature. This work has long been one of the most puzzling pictures of the 16th century collection, but it is a puzzle that has largely been resolved by technical examination and cleaning, as well as revealing the richness of Dosso's colours. Cleaning showed that the picture had been adapted for sale from a much larger round ceiling decoration. Okay. Apparently just <laughs> the dwarf trying to cop a feel. Yeah, righto. Um, what else we got? Final detective work in the conservation studio shows how the painting was oh, and... constructed. Oh, okay. Oh, it's part of like a ceiling fixture. I, I don't know what the deal is with this one. Um, a young man, Fondazione Roberto Longhi in Florence. Okay. Eight pieces that have been changed from a large randell to a marketable rectangular picture. Okay. So I guess it's like, eh. Yeah. Eh, uh, righto, righto. So they've found pieces and gone, okay, this might be the rest. But this is, this is such a weird picture, though. This tour ends here. If okay. If you want to find out more about the paintings we have discussed, choose one of the thumbnails on the right. Yeah, cool. Today. All right. Yeah, I'm still incredulous about Jesus' nipple. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah. Do we get general reference? Oh, we can just... Do, there's a glossary. In, oh, and you get little information on the actual subjects in the pictures. So there's old Henry VIII... Yeah, righto. Um, Christina of Denmark, which was one of his wives. I don't know, married by proxy the Duke of Milan. Yeah, righto. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, just got like reference. Oh, we got some saints. Yeah, righto. Um, uh, oh yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. Of... So it's, oh, it's depicting, like, yeah, there are a couple of pictures where it depicts, like, you know, Jesus, Mary, and the fucking... So, and so this is this is the highlight of um, the Gal National Gallery of London, just all religious stuff. Uh, I, I guess that was a big thing with, like, Renaissance artists. They did, like, their, um, their like, religious imagery. Okay, and it's just altarpieces from other churches and stuff like that. Okay. Yep, Christ is coming out. He's, you're all you're all in fucking trouble, kiddies. Anyway, um, what else we got? General reference, picture types. Oh, yeah, yep. Religious imagery, narrative allegory, and the nude. Um, portraits. Oh, yeah, everyday life stuff. Still life. Back to the general reference. We'll come back to picture types. Um, oh yeah, historical act uh, atlas of the collection. So it's showing you where specific things were painted. Doesn't really specify though. Oh, here they are arranged chronologically. Ah, uh, okay. So you can go through. You can go through the paintings based on location as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Artists' lives, yeah, can have a look at this. Oh, that's the historical atlas. Um, Ark and Acabates. Um, Bambino Vispo, master, yep. Yeah, okay, Van Brussel. Just trying to see if I can recognize any of these bloody names. Fair bit. Because, yeah, like, I have seen a few of these pieces, just not all of them. Was this St. George and the Dragon? Is that... Yeah, St. George and the Dragon. I may have seen this one before. Yeah, he so they certainly made that dragon a lot smaller than what he was meant to be. It kind of implies, like, I know he's trying to save her from the dragon, but it kind of looks like she's, it's, he's murdering his pet, her pet. I don't know what's going on there. Um, no, not general reference. Yeah, go picture types. So that's legit all we've got though. Just views. Let's go to everyday life. Painting of scenes of everyday life is above all the province of Dutch 17th century art. 
Um, yeah, a bit of, bit of, oh yeah, lots of, lots of, lots of drinking pictures. A Young Man Drinking by, uh, Marillo. Yeah, okay. Um, at the Cafe Chateau Dun. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dagar. Yeah, I've heard of Dagar. Um, peasant holding a jug. <laughs> I did poop in this. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Personification of Autumn. This is this is what Autumn... Oh, there's an actual painting of the Four Seasons. Okay, so spring, summer, autumn, winter. I guess maybe it's the different stages of a man's life as well. Possibly. Um, peasants making music, yeah. Yeah, this seems to be the easiest one. Just go through all the, the pictures. Oh, we can full screen some of them. They're just very pixely and... Um, yeah, a bit hard to see because it's still in. Yeah, this is legit meant to be in like two hundred and fifty-six colors, I think. Okay, okay. How are we doing on time? Yeah, a couple of a woman drinking with two men. Oh yeah, this is sort of like Stuart era. Look at all the Stuart. They love their frilly things on there, didn't they? And the big hats. Lots of big hats and bonnets and the like. The effects of intemperance. Ah, oh, okay. Um. Oh, okay. Hang on. I've heard of Steen. Wine is a mocker. Okay, so yeah, don't don't get on the piss too often. Or little girls will throw stuff at you. This is apparently the lesson. Um, what else we got? Education. Let's. <laughs> Well, that's a nice... Yeah, seeing this full size would be great, actually. What's uh, What was this one called? Uh, Cognoscenti in a room hung with pictures. Um, that's, uh, that's a little bit meta, too. Like, actually, that would be crazy, too. Like, the amount of detail you'd have to put not in... Not only in, like, the main painting, but to actually do, like, the details on each individual painting in this room. That's crazy. That's a crazy one. Um, a lady teaching a child to read. Yeah. So, girl. <laughs> she's got the one daughter that she knows is going to do well in school. And then the other daughter who's just going to get into social media. Just <laughs> get paintings of herself with the dog. <laughs> Whatever social media was, was it like in the 16th century? Um, what's this one? A boy seated drawing. Okay. Um, the young school mistress. Um, yeah, still haven't worked out. Yeah, I haven't, like, I've seen a few Stuart Arrow paintings, but, um, yeah, I don't really know much in the way of, like, you know, artists and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Bonifacio. Um, a huntsman. Okay. The labors of the months. Yeah, that's, meh. Interior of a barn. That is certainly a barn interior. Yeah, like, that's, a, that's the main thing I like about looking at art, though. Like, going to an art gallery, looking up nice and close and actually seeing, like, the brush strokes and the imprinting, like, the little details that can't be picked up unless you're using, like, a freaking 100 megapixel camera. Just some super high-quality shit. Uh, we looked at that one. A village scene with a cobbler or dog. Um, Van der Bosch. Okay. A woman scaring a pot. A doctor tending a patient's foot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of student, uh, steward error ones in this. <laughs> and that was the craziest thing. Like, yeah, you'd have people, like, posing for these photos as well. And they'd just sit, they have to sit there for hours and it's just, like, look natural. I'm like, okay. Yeah, legit sitting in the one position just doing that. It's, that's going to get annoying. Yeah, your hand would get all sweaty and you get in your beard and yeah, God. Oh yeah, Huntsman chopping up a deer. Um, with two deer hounds after a stag hunt. Okay. A woman scraping parsnips. This is... <laughs> I love the look on the kid as well. She's like, Mom, when's tea ready? <laughs> Yeah, yep, okay. What else we do? Work. Oh, yeah, some soldiers. We got some battles. 
soldiers fighting over the booty. Ah, it's my booty. No, it's look at what. Hang on, hang on. What's going on here? <laughs> okay, so these guys are having a re reasonably, you know, quick and easy sword fight. They're about to stab each other, and then their mates are just over here, both with muskets, just going, yeah. Which whoever wins is going to get shot. I don't know, are they meant to be, They. it seems more like they're meant to be pointing at these guys at the back. I really don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, Doister is making fun of the soldiers who are fighting over the distribution of booty. They're dressed in elaborate finery and entirely unsuited to the battlefield. Oh, maybe that's what they did. They had, like they found a heap of clothes and they put them on and they're like, no, I look better in this. No, you look better in this one. And then just... Yeah, shit escalated, apparently. Fighting of the booty. Um, campaign scene. Oh, yeah, more Stuart era stuff. Okay. Stable interior. Yeah, because it's uh, like, I, I find this side of it interesting as well now that I've seen, like, the cool Stuart era movies where they, like, got a DP to actually get the lighting exactly right to make it look like these sort of paintings. So the best examples of that would be um, Stanley Kubrick's uh, Barry Lyndon. And also, I, I only saw like both of these recently. Yeah, Barry Lyndon and um, The Duelists, which was um, Ridley Scott's first movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I remember this one. Yeah, so this one... Um... The Militia Company of Captain Banning Cock. They actually spoofed this specific painting for the front cover of um, a Discworld book. One of the, like, more recent ones. It was, like, uh, Samuel Vimes goes back in time to, like, train up his younger self. And they, like, specifically spoofed, like, this painting. Because I remember they did that a fair bit for, like, Discworld covers. Um, yep, stable imperia, officer dictating a letter. Oh, yeah, and you're getting into, like, the Ranheads and, yeah, all that sort of, Yeah, like, pikemen. You always needed pikemen to defend whoever's on the, uh, on the muskets. The interior of a smithy. That is a certainly dark and depressing old smithy. Yeah, right. Eh? Um, cavalry men halted at a sutler's booth. Leap Francois de Hanberg with horsemen. Yeah, that's a nice one. You got like, the little outdoor setting as well. All these like toffee rich blokes on the in their carriage. Fancy bastards. Um Oh smoking and bubble blowing. This is <laughs> this is part of everyday life in the Stuart era. Sure. A peasant seated smoking. He's yeah, what's in the pipe, bud? Um, okay. Two men with a sleeping woman. Oh, um, oh, they've got her on the piss and also they wanted to smoke up as well just for chits and giggles. Okay. Uh, a man blowing smoke at a drunken woman. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> Look at this boy though. This boy's just, this boy gives no fucks. He's just like, I just want to smoke my pipe, man. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we might even do that. I might find some like artwork to make fun of as part of a stream. I haven't done that for a while. Two boys, two boys blowing bubbles. And I always had to like, yeah, like that's apparently you, you didn't have wigs when you were a kid, you just grew your hair out. So yeah, man in black smoking a pipe, yeah. Oh yeah, Van Gogh's chair. Oh, which has his pipe on it. Maybe that's why he was depressed. He always left his pipe on his chair that was lit and then he sat on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Domestic interiors. A woman holding a mirror, a man in a room. Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a that's a good Rembrandt right there. Yep. God, you would you'd have to like commit that to memory too, because as the day rolled on, that whole um that'd change, wouldn't it? The, the light coming in the window. Um, a man and a woman by fire. Yep. So it's mainly just Stuart era stuff. This is this is the epitome of the Microsoft Art Gallery. In the mid nineties, it's just mostly, you know, Stuart era, sixteenth century stuff. A woman asleep with a Bible in her lap. Fuck, that's a big Bible too. Yeah, right. Eh? Woman feeding a parent. Oh, this is like Miss M's ancestor. 
And this is like her version of Peanut. Yeah, right Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. A young lady trimming her fingernails. Three, woman, three women and a seated man. Yep. Interior scene. Grandfather's birthday. Grandfather's birthday looks a bit fucking arty farty. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, Degar was pretty big on his nudes, wasn't he? Yeah, let's uh, let's finish out with some Oh, hang on. Where how did I miss this one? Courting and brothels. Wow, okay. Um what and co so yeah, let's let's check out some courting. Do we we do we fully go through drinking, mate? Party at the table. Yeah, we went through drinking. Yep, alright, we'll finish the courting and brothels and then maybe some nudes to finish out. Is it definitely yeah, like I, I know this. Uh, yeah, I can see my view account. Like, everyone's fucked off. Who was watching? It's like, uh, art. Oh, no, I don't want to see this. So they bugger it off. Itinerant entertainers in a brothel. Just a fucking... <laughs> this guy doing handstands. Yeah, righto. This, guy, this guy's already up some mischief. Yeah, okay. Uh, a merry company at a table. My grandma has gotten in on the action too. This is this was under this lady was under courty and brothels really, okay okay, um a woman playing cards with two peasants yeah okay, two lovers at a table, like oh dear, when your chin is so so moist <laughs> I don't know an old peasant caresses a kitchen maid, a lot of caressing going on, woman refusing to have glass of wine. Yeah, that's probably fair enough. She doesn't look like she can handle much liquor. Um, two peasants. Two peasants hanging out. Oh, there's a, there's some courtship going on. They're going to make some ugly fucking babies. A man offering an oyster to a woman. A man offering gold to a girl. Oh, this guy's in. Yeah, he's he's got the gold. It's like, <laughs> yeah, he's got it. <laughs> he's not getting much action otherwise. Look at that schnoz. That's a big ass schnoz. Um, an old woman kissing a lady's hand. Yeah, right. I, there was a lot of pictures of courtship here, isn't there? Not less of bro more courtship than brothels. That's probably fair enough considering the time period. Oh yeah, portraits. Yeah, let's uh, let's do some nudes to finish out. There, there seems to be a fair few in here though. It probably yeah, like this this doing this would make more sense if I streamed like the actual high quality version of these pictures instead of what was in. Windows 3.1. So what do we got? We got some tasteful stuff. We got some Adam and Eve. Adam has a look at Adam's fucking Jew fro though. Holy shit. <laughs> Seth Rogen is Adam in Adam and Eve. Um Cupid complaining to Venus. What's what do you got to bitch about, Cupid? Um Oh, he's been he stole some honeycomb and he's been stung by bees and Venus is like, eh, I don't give a shit. Yeah, okay. Very, um, very slim version of Venus there. What else we got? Charity. Yep, just nudes. Just <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen this one. The Rokeby Venus. Yeah, everyone always did. Um, hang on. The full title of this is The Toilet of Venus. Okay. This is the only surviving example of a female nude by Velasquez. The subject was rare in Spain because it met with... Disapproval of the Inquisition. Yeah, that makes sense, because nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, it was first recorded in June 1651 in the collection of the Marquis de Carpio, son of the first minister of Spain. It was probably made for him. The commission must have come from someone near the king to have avoided censure. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like, yeah, the yeah, fucking Inquisition would have cracked down on this. Yeah, there's, there's some bougie there. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Uh, what else we got for nudes? We'll, we'll get some cheesecake for the ladies. Oh, no, maybe not that one. You can see the back of his scrotum on that one. The Bark of Charon. Yeah, righto. Right. Um, no, no. What's going on here? Pan and syrinx? Whatever the hell that it shrinks is. Oh, yeah, Nympho stream. A bather. Seven some bathings. Yep, we saw her after the bath. Yeah, a lot of... Oh, there's a nice... Yeah, that's a cool one. Venus and Mars. Yeah, that's, that's classy. <laughs> Fucking fawns and shit stealing all the armor. Yeah, Botticelli I've heard of. Yeah, okay. Um, How are we doing on time, though? We're, we're getting close to the end. Yeah, oh, look at all these nudes. Just got to rope the viewers back in. Yeah, check out all this nude shit. Oh, yeah, oh, that's some lovely 
Some lovely sexy ladies here, the judgment of Paris. Yeah, right, eh? Um, yeah, go up to see one of these big long ones. Be cool, too. Um, pen. And who the hell is Syrinx, though? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, look at, look at all these damn nudes, though. That's a lot of nudes. Yep. Oedipus, Oedipus and the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Sphinx. How do, I, how do I do it with my mum? How are you doing, Supreme Ties? Yeah, we were looking at some, at some nudes. <laughs> we're finishing out. <laughs> all, my, all my viewers left. So I'm like, yeah, we're trying to rope them back in with some, some tasteful nudes. Yep, there we go. There's some Spartans just hanging out. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is apparently like what was in the National Gallery of London in the 90s. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think we've sort of, I can just do randomized ones. Yeah, righto. Okay. Um, let's get out of here though. Let's, let's move on to another game.